sorry, I had to read this out. Yellow card in sixth minutes to Boli. Uh, Bamford's injury in 23rd minute, which was a tearful exit for him. Neves' knee injury in 25th minute, replaced by Trincao, who in the very next minute gave an assist to Johnny for the first goal for Wolves. Leeds defender Laurente got a back injury in the 40th minute and he got replaced by Koch. Koch. K O C H. 43rd minute, Raul Jimenez gets his first yellow card. Now, Cleach subbed off for Cresswell, not the West Ham one. I think this one was Charlie. In the 54th minute of the first half, that is the ninth minute in the injury time of the first half. Struik gets a yellow card for a foul on Jimenez, resulting in the second goal scored by the substitute Trincao in the 11th minute of the first half, which is the 56th minute. And then the halftime whistle after 57 minutes. Then comes the big moment of the game. Jimenez crashes into Messlier outside the box, which to me looked accidental, to be honest. I may be wrong. Jimenez gets his second yellow card and is off. Wolves down to 10 men, eight minutes into second half. Now this next chart or graph uh, is one of my go-to tools. Uh, if I were to kind of understand how the game went on uh, and just to take a quick recap of the game, if, if I'm short of time, it's called the attack moment and graph. It basically gives us an idea of how either of the teams went about um, the business in terms of, especially in terms of uh, attacking play. Uh, longer the bar is, uh, that means more menacing the attack is for, for the team. Just keep an eye out for two things. Flurry of activity in Leeds box around the halftime whistle, just before the halftime whistle, and then around the 60th minute mark in the Wolves penalty box. With the mayhem that came produced for the two set of fans, it was surprising that none of the players had an expected goal involvement of more than one. A game with 29 shots, 14 on target, 19 of them taken from inside the box and 3 of them hitting the woodwork, it had the Leeds fans going berserk at the end. It was an incredible game with Leeds losing 4 players to injury on their way to the second back-to-back -back wins of the season. A word on Jack Harrison, which according to me was the man of the match along with Luke Ayling. 59 touches, 8 crosses, 2 chances created, 1 big chance created, 2 shots on target and his 5th goal of the season. He along with his captain, Luke Ayling, were just colossal for Leeds United in this game. Wolves conceded three goals for the first time this season and will now meet ninth-placed Aston Villa in two weeks' time. On the other hand, with two wins on the bounce, Leeds are now seven points above the drop zone, having played one game extra than the 18th-placed Watford. Aston Villa vs Arsenal was touted to be a very fast-paced affair, uh, as Gerard's villains have proven to be a pain in the ass for the visitors uh, since the time Gerard has taken over. They have just blanked once in the home games till now under Gerard. But the team in the ascendancy, Arsenal had other ideas. With Leno replacing an injured Ramsdale between the posts and ESR replacing an ill Martinelli, Arsenal continued their surge towards the fourth Champions League spot with a clinical first half attacking performance followed by dogged defending in the last 20 minutes of the game. Now this next chart or graph uh, is one of my go-to tools.
Smith Rowe, with his first start in five games, had three shots, one off which had an expected goal of 0.69. For Aston Villa, 82nd minute sub Ings had a 0.5 expected goal header, which missed the target 10 yards from the goal. Saka, with a 0.06 expected goal, created two chances, creating a total of expected goal involvement of 0.61. Saka with his fourth double-digit haul in 10 games has now gone past Yota and is just two points behind Mane. He is rightfully now the second most owned midfielder in FPL and fourth most owned overall. Don't worry about him being subbed off in 60th minute as Arteta stated post-match. Arsenal are still in the driving seat for the fourth spot with a three-point lead over Spurs and a game in hand. Aston Villa could see themselves to 10th with Leicester at same points with two games in hand. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Big shout out to our friends at allaboutfpl.com. Uh, it's a community build of FPL content creators who give their inputs and their ideas to the FPL community day in, day out. I'm a part of the community too and this video is just a small drop in the ocean of what all all of our FPL does for this community. I will leave the social media links in the description below. Do check it out. Till the next review, take care.